Okay, to move on with the demonstration side of the tutorial, I've now switched over to the TrapTagger website, um, which is at traptagger.co.uk, um, where you'll be presented with a login screen. So obviously, what the first thing you need to do is to get a, your account set up. And that's what we're going to do in this video. So at this stage, it's worth noting that there are two types of account in TrapTagger. There are organization accounts and user accounts. Organizations own data, um, whereas users interact with and administer that data. Users can be members of multiple organizations with differing level of access to each organization's data. U user data access can be broken down into varying levels. Um, starting at the lowest access would be worker-only access, and that's where um, you would only be able to annotate jobs for that particular organization. You see an image, and you label what species is in it. You don't get access to any of the, the backend information relating to that image. A level up from that would then be read-only access, where you're able to actually um, look at the images in the data set, look at, um, download the data associated with it, um, look at coordinate information, and basically just to read stuff, but not be able to change anything. Right access would then be a level above that, where you're now able to edit and change things. And then the level above that then is administrator access. And that then is right access plus the ability to administer um, the members of, an org of, of the organization. So being able to invite new members, remove members, edit their permissions, and then also share data with other organizations. Um, so that's basically what you need to know there. There is a full um, video focusing on that topic going sort of into um, going deeper on that um, but we'll just leave it at that for now. So basically when you start um, if your organization doesn't have um, an account the first thing you're going to want to do is to register a new organization with TrapTagger. So on the login page you'll see there's a link here called register new organization and you click that takes you to a form where you enter in your desired organizational name, um, your email address, and a description of the work that you do. And then some anti-spam stuff there. And so the idea there is, it's not a test, um, but it's really what that'll do is actually send an email to myself um, where I can see who's applying for, an for, for a new organization account, does that organization already have an account, um, and those sorts of things and basically just make sure that the site in general is not being abused um, since it, you know since it's free um, so because that's a, um, you know a manned a, um, process that can take a few days depending on um, when you do it and my schedule at the time um, so what they will do then is create the organizational account and I'll also you'll be sent um, credentials for a root user for that organization and so the idea with that root user account is you can use it as your main account if you really want to um, but in theory for better security practices um, you should just keep that account as your um, backdoor key um, so basically the idea then is that you must get all your um, your administrators your people that you want to administer um, uh, your organization get them to sign up as users and then set them as, as administrators. And then the idea is that if one of their accounts gets hacked or taken over or they get to log out on a computer somewhere, someone can't go, you know, someone can go in and you know remove everybody else's access from your organization, but you can still they'll never be able to remove that root user's access. So you can just then log back in with your root user and um, take back control from any bad actor or something like that. So that's sort of the idea there. So um, once you've now registered, you'll be sent root user. You'll then want to register a personal account for yourself. So the way you do that is again, go to the login page. Um, and this time you can see there sign up as a user. So you click there. And again, it's just a form. And essentially you want a unique username, um, an email address, and then a password. And so what that'll do then is it's fully automated. So this doesn't go through a human. It'll immediately send a verification email to your email address. Check in your spam folder. It can often go to spam. Um, 
And in that email, there'll be a link to just then um, verify that that email address you supplied is indeed yours. Um, and then at that stage, it'll create an account for you. Um, and you can then proceed. Okay, so now I've gone ahead and registered my organization. In this case, I've registered one for wild art conservation. And I have now signed up as a user in my personal capacity. Um, and now signed in to that, that, that user account. And I'm met with this screen, this landing screen. And basically what this is telling me is that the user account that I have um, logged in with is not a member of any organizations. And as such, now I must go and request the organization that I'm a member of to add me as a member. So what I just want to do then is um, to log in with my um, organizational root user and add myself as an administrator. And so what, the way I'm going to do that, um, and it's my recommended way to do it more easily, is to open an incognito tab on Google Google Chrome. So if you'll see in the buttons, the dots here on the right, um, you can then say new incognito window, and that'll allow you to log into two different accounts at the same time. And we'll just make this process a little bit quicker instead of constantly having to um, uh, yeah, be able to log in and log out. So but I've, got, I've got that prepared already, so I'm just gonna sort of switch with the Alt tab. Um, no. Um, there we go. Um, so there we go. We've got now. This is now my uh, root user for um, wildlife conservation. And what I've done is to go over to the permissions page. You can see permissions there. And so again, all these this this page I've covered in detail in um, a dedicated video. So we're just doing the basics for now. And so you go to the permissions page and you go to your users tab. So here you can see all the people that are members of your organization. And obviously we have no members at this stage. So what you want to do is invite a new member. Um, so click invite user. And if, you know, for now, obviously I'm just logged into WildEye account, but if you are somebody who's an administrator for multiple organizations, you can obviously invite people to join the different organizations. So in this case, we're wanting to invite somebody to join WildEye and you enter in their unique username that they signed up with. In this case, my personal account is just called Nicholas. Um, I enter that name and click send. So what that will do then is send me an invitation. Um, so if I then switch over to my other account, um, let's just refresh the page just to um, speed the process up. Um, there we go. So you can see now my notifications, I've got a notification. So if I go to that, um, I'm just going to open it to make it easier. It says, Wildeye has invited me to join their organization. Do I accept or decline the invite? So obviously, I want to accept. So now, I'm a member of, Wild Eye um, of the Wildeye organization. And by default, it gives me the lowest level of access. Just to be safe. And then, the administrators of that account can increase my access. So, this is then basically what a worker will see. It's just have a jobs page and you can pick up jobs. Um, I've also got a notification here as well out of interest as just let inform me that I've accepted the invitation. So I'm going to switch back over to my um, to the WildEye account. Again we'll just refresh just to um, speed the process up and there we go. So now we've got Nicholas as a user. Um, so you can also see my email address um, and stuff like that, so you can you know you can contact the user as necessary. You also see in my notifications, I will have received a notification now informing me um, that Nicholas has accepted the invitation. So what I can go ahead and do, and do now is set my access permission. So um, what I'm wanting to do is be an admin. So I'm going to push myself all the way up to administrator. This is just informing me um, that. Uh, administrators can't have survey level exceptions. So basically the idea is that you can have a level of access, but set special access for, um, on a per data set basis. Um, we're not worried about any of that now. It's not important. We're just gonna say confirm. Um, now I can also give myself, um, I want to have all the other access. So annotation access separately allows me to perform work or annotation jobs for 
WildEye. I also want to have the option to create new surveys for WildEye, as well as be able to delete surveys. So now I've added all my permissions. Um, you'll see the notifications filter through. And so basically the idea is any um, uh, action you take like that, adding a new user, um, changing somebody's permissions, stuff like that, will send a notification to the affected user as well as all administrators of the organization so that they are aware of what's going on. So that should all now be correct. And if I switch over to my pers personal account and let me, um, we can see now I've got a bunch of notifications um, and I can open that and I can see that for instance, um, I've been granted, um, my default permission has been set to admin for WildEye been granted um, annotation permission, creation permission, and deletion permission. So if I just refresh the page now, I, you can see now I've got access to all the different pages now. So I can now act as an administrator for WildEye, um, and I can see the data sets that I've already um, pre-created um, for, for this um, demo. And you can also see I now will have access to the, uh, you can see my personal permissions. I'm an administrator for WildEye, and I can then also administer the users for WildEye. So now I'm set up and ready to go. And in theory, from here on forward, I will just be using my personal user account to access WildEye.